Okay, we've just done this question that was here about multiple choice questions. Um, and we've done a full test in this way. Um, and we worked out that we weren't going to reject the null hypothesis because 12% was bigger than 5%. But there's a different way I could have answered this question. How else could I have answered this question? Critical regions. OK, so I'm going to do a critical regions. And I'm going to be using this thing that I've got here. And I'm going to go over to my camera for a second. And we're going to find the critical regions at the 5% significance level. So I can't remember how many questions it was. 10 questions. OK. So critical region, we're looking at 0.2%, which is down here. And we're looking at 10, which is right at the bottom of my page, here. So we're interested in the extreme region. And we wanted it to be bigger than 5%, uh, didn't we? So if we look down this list, uh, which is the first one that goes above 95? 0.9672, which corresponds to 4. So the critical region five. is bigger than 5. OK, so we could actually say that here. The probability that x is greater than or equal to 5 is 1 minus the probability that x is less than or equal to 4, which is blah, 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 blah. Anyway, I should have just saved a bit of time there. The critical region is x is greater than or equal to 5. Her mark is 4, so not in the region. No evidence to reject H0. Teacher's claim is supported. OK? So if someone got 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, or 10 right, that would make the teacher be like, that student knew what they were doing. If someone got 4, 3, 2, 1, or 0, that student was just randomly guessing or had anti-knowledge and thought that they, if they got zero, they probably knew the wrong things. OK? So let's do a two-tailed test. We've got two two-tailed tests to do, and then we're done. Thank you for your patience with all of this. So we've already seen that if we're interested in bias either way, we have two tails, and therefore we have to split the critical region by halving the significance level at each end. So this one's a bit weird when we read through it, but we just try and extract all of the information and see what that does. Over a long period of time, it has been found that in Enrico's restaurant, the ratio of non-veg to veg meals is two to one. In Manuel's restaurant, in a random sample of 10 people ordering meals, one ordered a vegetarian meal. Using a 5% level of significance, test whether or not the proportion of people eating veg meals in Manuel's restaurant is different to that in Enrico's restaurant. So there's something about it being if the proportion is different to. It didn't say, is the proportion, are more people in this restaurant eating more vegetarian meals? Are people in this restaurant eating less vegetarian meals? We're just saying it's just not the same as Enrico's restaurant. They're different to each other. So it's definitely going to be a two-tailed test. Well spotted, Hamza. <laughs> so x, what is x going to be? The number of veg meals ordered. P. Huh? Sorry? Well, the X is going to be in Manuel's restaurant. Yeah, it's going to be in Manuel's restaurant. But we don't need to specify that, that enough. We're just saying X is what we're measuring here. Yeah? P is the probability. In fact, I think X could be in either of the restaurants, Hamza. Yeah. P is the probability of ordering a veg meal. And so we think that X is binomially distributed with 10 meals being ordered. What do we think is the probability? Oh, we're just going to say 10 and P. What do we think the probability is, though, for the null hypothesis? Two to one means non-veg, no, non-veg, veg. One in three meals is vegetarian. So the probability is a third. <laughs> the null hypothesis is that it is not a third. But in this other restaurant, 
Is it at the positive extreme end or the negative extreme end? It's at the negative because we've only got one person out of 10, which is less than we would have expected. But it's still a two-tailed test because we're saying that it is different to Enrico's restaurant. So if we assume H0, then X is binomially distributed with 10 meals and a probability of a third. Now, this one, you can't use the tables. So you can't do, you can't do the critical values for this one because there's no tables. You'd have to do that on a calculator, and it's very, very long. So we're going to try and find out what is the probability that in Manuel's restaurant, someone orders one meal or more or less. The probability of someone ordering more than one meal, according to this, is going to be pretty high because the average that you'd expect would be three meals, right? So we're not going to be doing more than one. One is an extreme value, isn't it? One is an extreme. We're like, what? Ten people came in and only one person had a vegetarian meal? So we're actually interested in what about if there was one or less? And that's one you can just put straight into your calculator. So we're going to do 0, 1. <laughs> one, is zero, one zero, four, zero, four. Good. And so you get 0 0.1040. Zero, zero. OK? Which is less than what? Not less than. Which is greater than what? Good. 0, point zero no, 0.025. It's a 5% significance, so it's a 2.5% at each end. So, not enough evidence. Uh, there's a 10% chance that either one or zero people will order no vegetarian food. Sorry, sorry, sorry. 10 or 1%, uh, there's a 10% chance that one or nobody will order vegetarian food. Okay. Sorry. So there's not enough evidence to reject H0. You don't need to check the other one because getting more than one is a lot higher of a percentage. Yeah, getting more than one is going to be like 90%. It's not extreme in that kind of way. Now do we do the same thing? So not enough evidence to reject H0, which means uh, proportion of veg in both restaurants is the same. There's nothing that makes us think that they're different, OK? So we don't have to do the other end, Hamza. If we did do the other end, if we said, what's the probability that someone got greater than or equal to 1, the probability that it's greater than or equal to 1 is 0 0.98265. Which is way bigger than the significance level at the other end. We only need to look at the end that we're actually thinking is an extreme value. I'm talking to you. Okay? So we don't need to look at that end. Okay, there's a question in here that I want you guys to have a go at. Just one. So we're going to do a two-tail test, and then we've got some time to do some practice. So yes. So when they don't even specify which end we're looking at, you'd half the significance always. Yes, you always half the significance, but it's basically the same thing. You still look at whichever end you think is the extreme. I'm going to do this one quietly on the board, just so you've got a video of it, um, and then we're going to do some practice. Okay. So a teacher thinks that 20% of his pupils in a school read the Dino, Dino comic regularly. He chooses 20 pupils at random and finds that nine of them read the Dino. Test at the 5% level of... Shh, 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 shh. Test at the 5% level of significance whether or not there is evidence to <coughs> that the percentage of pupils that read the Dino is different from 20%. State your hypotheses clearly. So, looks like X is... The number of students reading the Dino. P is the probability a student reads the Dino. So we think that X is binomially distributed 
with 20 people and a probability of p. The null hypothesis is that the probability is in line with the 20% that he thinks. The alternative hypothesis is that it is not 0.2 because he just says that it is different from 20%. So if we assume h naught, then we think that x is binomially distributed with 20 trials and a probability of 0.2. And they have found that 9 of them out of 20 read the Dino. Well, 9 out of 20 seems pretty extreme. What do we think? Has anyone got to this stage and decided whether they think it's greater than 9 or less than 9? X is greater than or equal to 9. Because if there's a 20% chance and there's 20 pupils, you'd expect 4 people. <laughs> You'd expect there to be four people, and the fact that there was nine is like, whoa, we better check nine or the more extreme ones. You're like, whoa, nine's a lot. Let's see nine or bigger. So probability of greater than or equal to nine is one minus probability of x is less than or equal to eight. Yeah. This bit down here. Yeah. Okay, so guys, can you just be a bit quiet while I'm just speaking to Ismail? So the the teacher thinks that twenty percent of them read the genome, and there are twenty pupils in here. So you should probably say to yourself, what is twenty percent of twenty? Which is four. So you would expect four uh, comic readers. So you'd expect there to be four people, yeah? But because he's spotted nine people, he's gone, whoa, nine people are reading the Dino. I was only expecting to see four. So nine feels like a big value. So he's interested in big values, nine or even bigger. So he's, he's like, whoa, that's big, nine or bigger. If he saw something, he went, oh, that doesn't seem like many people are reading that comic. He would say that number or smaller, OK? <laughs> Yeah, I've got that, and that's less than 0 0.025. 0 0.025. So you don't have probably 0.2, because you put 0 0.1 there. Yes, so it would have to be, for this bit, oh, 2.5, which is less than 0 0.025. So, shh, evidence to reject H0. Uh, the teacher's claim is supported. Oh, no, 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 not the teacher's claim. Sorry, the teacher's claim is not supported. The evidence for H naught, the percentage of readers is less than 20. Or we can just say is not. 20%. It's actually more than 20%. Oh, crap. Well, it's going to be more likely to be more than 20%, right? He thought it was 20%. This sample of, of people is making him go like, whoa, actually, quite a lot of people do. Part two, state all the possible numbers of people that read the Dino for a sample of 20 that will make it significant. Okay. So I'm going to go to my thing here. So this is... 20 and 0 0.2. Looks like 0 and 8. Yeah. Yeah, when it rounds, I think it would round to 0 0.001. Okay, then it's 
Oh, no, I've done that. Yeah, that would round to 0 0.001. No, I've done that wrong. Yeah, I've done that wrong. Sorry, too many zeros in there. Um, and then the last bit is to do the critical values in the regions, which came from here. I've got 20 and 0 0.2. The first one that dips below 5% is 0, which is 0 0.0115. So the probability of x being equal to 0 is 0 0.0115. And then the probability that x is greater than or equal to 8 is... 1 minus the probability of this one, which is 0 0.9679. You should probably use a calculator because I've made a mistake, which is 0 0.0321. And so one last bonus question. What is the actual significance? Good. 0 0.0115 plus 0 0.0321, which is 0 0.436 which is still close to the 5% that we were expecting. Oh, I've done that wrong. My, this is where I should just use a calculator, which is still close to 5% as we were expecting. OK, so we have got 20 minutes. I think you should do a mixture of questions from exercise 7C and 7D, and you should do some full binomial tests. And you should ask me to come over when there's bits you're confused on. OK, I can't believe we've done this all in like an hour. I've been very, very pleased. Well done.